Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project Magnetic Reversal News and Shinrin Yoku, bringing you a grand solar minimum update Tuesday, April 20th, 420, 2021. Take a look at the models and take a look at Santorini shaken by earthquakes. But the big story, old man winter to bring unusual late season snow and record cold this week, like a tweak. Keep calm. It's boom time. April showers bring May flowers in Indiana. Snowfall amounts increase in the latest upstate New York forecast. Winter weather alerts issued and it increases across the country. Joe's weather blog, a record snow for April in Indiana and for the late spring too. Who knew? Record breaking. We're talking back to 1886. Snow falling in the mid continent. Right before May. Hey, hey. Well, that was something else. Two to four plus inches of snow in the region. It came down fast and furious in a few hours. The northern parts of the area had more compared to the southern parts of the metro. Ended up with about two and a half inches. That's the highest amount of snow for the season or close to it. KCI is around four inches of snow. It was up to three at 7 a.m. hour. Came at a route of one inches per hour. There are four and a half inches in Platte County. It's the heaviest snow so far, so late in the season. And while not a record for April, it's record for today's date. That's their fate. Winter Park gets over a foot of snow in the latest storm. As Colorado expects two inches per hour, rapid expected snowfall prompts multiple winter storm warnings in the state. Despite freeze concerns, the western slope farmers say the peach crop is on track. It's been decimated for years. Cold snap, spring freeze and snow is here and we're talking Ohio and it's going to get brutal and we're going to check the models in a minute as the late season cold blast and snow moves east as record lows are expected in the south after they have been basking in the global warming goodness. Near record cold follows historic late season snowfall and well, people are bumming everywhere because it was feeling like spring and now the summer of bummer. Here are the snowfall amounts from the last 48 hours, and you can see that system where it's moving. It's pointing an arrow to the east. Already snow on the ground in Indiana and Illinois, and they are Illinois, I'm sure. Below normal temperatures continue. A strong cold front will sweep through the east on Wednesday with heavy wet snow from the eastern Great Lakes into northern New England. And strong thunderstorms with damaging winds in the mid-Atlantic and northeast like a beast. Take a look at the map. It's looking like crap. The big story, though, will continue to be the well below average temperatures. I'm getting washed out here. Let me fix the light. <laughs> how, you, how the heck are you? The big story will continue to be the well below average temperatures behind the storm system or east of the Rockies. It's going to push its way through as numerous record cold temperatures are likely to be exploded. Wait till you see the numbers and take a look at the map. Purple, blue and purple like a schmurple. Yes, that is freeze warnings, hard freeze warnings. We're not talking frost or frippy flaps. We're talking fristy nips or frosty nips. We're talking freeze, deep freeze and deeper freezes. And those are the purple regions across 11 states. That's pretty significant. You can see the winds continue to blow in the Four Corners region, wafting. The ever-present danger of the wildfire. What say you? It's looking pretty nippy in Texas, the nexus of the Schmexus and other regions, because it's a hard freeze on. Click on your county to get more information and to get up to speed. Let's check the models. They're looking snowy and quite blowy. We'll move them through here. Here's your Tuesday through Wednesday. There's your lose day. Ohio in the bullseye here, picking up, well, it's looking eight inches in some regions, two little swaths of eight inches moving across there, as well as the lake effect happening Wednesday night into Thursday. So we're talking heavy snow in upstate New York, upstate uh, Vermont, New Hampshire. Maybe the ski season isn't over there, but there's certainly going to be some sledding and shoveling. And then take a look at the West. It's the best. Snow's going to begin to build up in Canada there in the western regions, Saskatchewan and Ontario, uh, 
No, that's not where it is. It's Saskatchewan and Alberta. My bad. But take a look at how the Rocky Mountain front is going to fare here through Saturday and into the weekend. A little pulse of snow, a second pulse going down uh, during the week here into Monday into the Sierras. That's pretty nice. And just take a look at how the models fill in through the end of May. Hey, hey. Three events in the West. One, two, three. One, two, three. And we're going to take them one at a time. The first one that's going to bring some significant moisture here is Thursday and Friday. Maybe we'll get a little uh, flakes here. And Thursday, Friday through Saturday and Sunday is going to bring snow all the way down that West Coast front from the Cascades all the way down the Sierras. Much needed moisture. So that's good news. And what's also good news is that that pattern continues to bring more and more moisture up to three feet in some regions of uh, well-needed areas here in the Four Corners region. And I'm sure there'll be some drizzle and rain because it's only snowing in the high country. I didn't have time to check that model, but I'll share it with you when I do. April snow hits Hungary as I'm getting hungry. As Switzerland registers the coldest spell in three slash decades, European fruit shortages are expected. Have you heard? Well, now you have. April snow hits Hungary and there's a bike buried in the global warming goodness. Switzerland registers its coldest spell in three decades. In nearby Switzerland, the first half of April has been characterized by low minimum temps, frequent frosts at ground level, and snowfalls down to very low altitudes. The mean temperature outlook looks sucky. Germany, it doesn't look any better. And if you check the models, well, it's going to be cold out there. Inglis colds this April since 1922. Germany's chilliest since 1972. It, it might be late April, but spring 2021, ding, ding is a no-show. Across much of Europe, the continent is suffering a climatic reality similar to that of previous prolonged spells of reduced solar output. Not since the centennial minimum, 1880 to 1920, have Europeans suffered an April. This cold and this bold and this snowy. England's coldiest, coldiest. <laughs> it's a new word. England's coldiest April since 1922. Who knew? Germans chilliest since 1917. Like a queen, with a mean temperature of just 4.5 C, Germany is faring even worse than England. It is on for second coldest April since records began in 1881, which is quite a few years. I might be getting up there, but I don't remember the 1800s. And if you don't remember, the, the world is cooling. At a record pace. In fact, the temperature in just one year has dropped 0.6 degrees C. Almost, all, it, it's the entire global warming narrative in just one year has been erased. And I hear crickets from the mainstream, by the way. Here we're looking at the total snow mass for the northern hemisphere, excluding the mountains, and it's epic. 700 gigatons above normal, which is only 1,700 gigatons. So we're sitting at 2,400 gigatons. It should be 1,700. It should be going away rapidly. Yet we are at the same level. 24 gigatons as it should be, well, weeks ago. Ho, ho. Devastating crop failures in 2021. Throughout U.S. history, there have always been droughts in the western half of the country from time to time. But what we're dealing with now is a grand solar minimum drought. And it's quite droughty. Now, the way the pattern works historically is that this western drought will translate to the east like a beast over the coming days, decades, weeks, months, and many years, but likely decades. So potentially by the bottom of the grand solar minimum, 2040-ish or earlier, we could see this entire drought shift to the east of the U.S. and other droughts popping up, mega droughts worldwide. And these will happen in the current crop growing zones. Like bones, the dirt will be as farmers warn that mega droughts in the western U.S. threaten to cause devastating crop failures in 2021. What fun. Santorini shaken by earthquakes. How are you shaken up? Let's check the seismic map. Seismic update. No quakes of note. Well, 
I digress. And 2.52 kilometers east southeast of Eureka, Missouri, where it is going to be miserable if the New Madrid does fault. And here's that big boomer out here in Greece we're about to talk about with the clout shout. Oh, so I'll turn the party out. And 4.6, 4 29 kilometers south of Mandraki, Greece. And that is not how you say it. Volcanic pollution, however, is a threat to public health, just like global warming and climate change. Have you heard? Has nothing to do with industry. <laughs> or 80% uh, of all the pollution on the planet is from ag uh, multinational corporations. Hello! Worldwide Volcano News Update. Popo, Semaru, Ibu, Dukono, Reventador, Sangay, Liwotolol. Sabankaya. Hey, good news. Iceland's not on there. St. Vincent's not on there. Holy macaroni. Santorini, Greece, we're doomed. Moderate earthquake near undersea volcano besides Santorini. Should we worry? Yes, we should be very worried. This morning, a magnitude 4 earthquake occurred 10 kilometers northeast of Santorini. The quake hit at 11.21 a.m. local time. It was felt by many people in Santorini, especially in the northern part of the island on the town of what? Mostly as a weak shaking that lasted a few seconds. So we're going to look at that right now. There's the weak shaking. Looks more like a quaking. But who's taking names? We are. Colombo Volcano is the one that's a submarine volcano just off the shore there. And the current status is one out of five, which means they need a Take that up to two, probably hit three by morning. That's how backed up they are. Colombo or Columbus Volcano is an active submarine volcano located eight kilometers northeast of Santorini Island in the Aegean Sea. The volcano forms an elliptical southwest northeast elongated three kilometer wide cone with a 500 meter deep and a 1.5 kilometer wide crater. Like a tater of a schmater and a tot. The rim's highest part rises 18 to 15 meters beneath sea level. It's, so it's right there. It, it used to actually be an island when this baby popped, and now it's eroded just below the surface, and no one knows it's there since 1600. So for hundreds of years, it's now a mystery. But back in the 1600s, everyone knew of the island there, and they probably vacationed there. But soon it will go boom. Now... What do we have to look forward to? Well, let's talk about it. We might as well get into that. The 1650 eruption of Colombo Volcano is the in entirety of all the historical documentation we know, and well, let's delve into it, because the mainstream certainly is not going to tell you. The large hydrothermal field on the northern part of the caldera at about 500 meters depth contains a massive, Kuroko style sulfide deposit. This is fantastic. If you could, were able to dive down there, well, only such a few deposits are known worldwide, and they are of great interest, especially because they are typically high content of gold and silver in the sulfides. Absolutely a gold mine. In 2010, the exploration vessel EV Nautilus discovered steep, up to six meter high chimneys of sulfides above the vents of the Colombo volcano. Now, the 1650 eruption of Colombo was a very explosive event and ejected pumice and ash as far as Turkey, which is a different continent, and produced pyroclastic flows that killed 70 people on Santorini. And during the eruption, it constructed a temporary island, which I just spoke of, hence the name Colombo in Greece, meaning swimming, where they went to swim. A tsunami occurred as well, probably during the collapse of the subsurface cone, and it caused damage to nearby islands up to 150 kilometers and invaded the flat coastal areas, especially on the eastern side of Santorini, where ruins from Roman times were uncovered, buried. The eruption also has caused damage and killed a great number of livestock because of poisonous gases, specifically H2S, hydrogen sulfide. That's fart gas, I think. Very weird how you would die from that. 
Recent trends in the waviness of the Northern Hemisphere, wintertime polar and subtropical jets have been confirmed just this week. The exact thing that we've predicted for the last four years to be occurring has been scientifically confirmed in a paper. Well, kudos to you, but you're a little late. Well, I guess you're not. You've been watching the channel. Quantifying overestimated permafrost extent driven by rock glacier inventory has been exposed. And that means not only have scientists been lying to you about the extent of the permafrost loss, but so has the mainstream because they have been simply gobbledygooking what they're saying. Are you picking it up? I just, well, well boom. Signs of biological activity of a 28,000-year-old mammoth nuclei in mouse oocytes, visualized by uh, live cell imaging. It's here, folks. You didn't believe it, but Jurassic Park is now happening before your very lives, and no one is stopping it. Well, why would they? Stanford study quietly published in NIH government proves that Face panties, absolutely worthless against any disease, especially COVID. And here's the paper to prove it. So if this is the end of the channel, then this is the end of science. And right after the admission that there is no use for the panties on the faces, here comes the new cover story, herd immunity is impossible. It's been possible for the entirety of the human species. Now, on this particular one that we created, it's not possible because we said so. Hope you got something out of the video. Proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance in a manufactured world, in a fake reality that you're living. If you're not planting something now, you're losing. Create community. Kiss someone you love because you only live today. Proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance in a dystopian world where if you watch the boob tube, you will be dystopianized. Thanks to all our one-time donors, our Patreons. We're still alive and we're still fighting for you. Who knew? Click on one of the other boxes to gain more knowledge. And be sure to check out our amazing documentary on the Moon House Ruins tomorrow. I promise it will not disappoint. Be safe. We love you. And that's a boom to knowledge. No, 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 no.